The world is changing fast, but you can learn it at a slower pace. Special English. You're listening to Special English. Here's the news. China's inbound tourism market continues to recover this year and is expected to reach as much as 80% of the pre-pandemic level in 2019 in terms of the number of foreign tourists. That is according to the latest industrial report released by the China Tourism Academy. The number of overseas tourists who search for flights to and accommodation in China has increased significantly, suggesting the growing potential demand for traveling in China. The report indicates a relatively optimistic prospect for the inbound tourism market, considering the continuous resumption of international flights, further improvement of entry convenience and inbound tourism supply chain, and active promotion of tourist destinations across China. Chinese culture and high-quality life experiences are the core attractions of the destinations as more than 60% of the surveyed listed experiencing Chinese culture as their top reason for traveling to the country. The report added that fascinating experiences including delicacies, health care services, and shopping are also part of their to-do lists during travels. Statistics released by the National Immigration Administration show that the number of foreigners coming to China recorded a threefold increase year on year in the first quarter of this year, notably, some 1.98 million foreigners enjoyed visa-free entry into China during the first three months of this year, soaring 266% year-on-year. This is Special English. A collaborative study led by scientists from China and Britain revealed that at least 60% of the genetic diversity found in a historic collection of wheat is unused, providing an opportunity to improve modern wheat varieties and achieve food security. The study, published in the journal Nature, was jointly conducted by a research team from the Agricultural Genomics Institute in Shenzhen under the Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences and the John Inez Center in Britain, as well as other research organizations. Wheat is one of the most important global food crops for humans. Faced with a series of challenges 
such as the continuous growth of global population, complex climate change, and the gradual slowing down of the cultivation of new wheat varieties, scientists urgently need to find efficient methods to cultivate new varieties with high yield and high quality. That is according to Cheng Shifeng, the Chinese leading scientist in the study. Cheng's team introduced from Britain a historic collection of wheat gathered in the 1920s and 30s from 32 countries, which are no longer grown anywhere in the world. Experiments have been carried out across China along with a comparative analysis of the nearly century-old wheat with modern varieties. By using cutting-edge technologies, including genomics, genetics, bioinformatics, and molecular biology, scientists built a wheat genomic variation map, revealing that modern wheat varieties have lost over 60% of their genetic diversity through long-term artificial selection. Simon Griffiths, a group leader at the John Innes Center, noted that this missing 60% discovered in this study is full of beneficial genes that can help to feed people sustainably. Chung added that scientists can retrace a huge set of novel, functional, and beneficial diversity that were lost in modern wheat varieties and now have the opportunity to add them back into elites in the breeding programs. Chu Chong Tsai, a professor with the South China Agricultural University, noted that the study has opened up endless possibilities for utilizing ancient germplasm resources to improve modern wheat breeding with epoch making significance for wheat breeding in China and even the world. You're listening to Special English. After lying buried for 1,200 years, a lotus seed has grown into a blooming flower in a southern Chinese city, revealing the ancient appearance of a flower that has featured prominently in Chinese poetry and cuisine. The lotus, displayed at a botanical garden in Nanning, the capital of Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region, grew from one of the three seeds excavated from northeast China's Liaoning province. Carbon-14 tests have identified them as around 1,200 years old. Since May last year, botanists from the Guangxi Research Institute for subtropical plants have been attempting to revive the seeds. They carefully cut open the seed shells to facilitate sprouting before 
placing them in a carefully monitored environment. Eventually, two seeds sprouted and one blossomed for the first time this May. Wei Miao Chin, a researcher with the Institute, said that lotus seeds feature a multi layered structure that seals off water and air, allowing them to remain dormant for over a millennium if kept in a dry, cool, and sealed environment. This is Special English. Imagine yourself nestled deep within a well lit cave, sinking into a plush sofa, leisurely leafing through a magazine. Beside you, a steaming cup of freshly brewed coffee and a slice of cake shaped. Like a millennia old painted pottery jar await. This serene setting isn't just a figment of imagination, but a reality at the Art and Life Gallery affiliated to the Gansu Provincial Museum in northwest China. Captivating the hearts of young visitors since its official opening in mid June. Tsui Yoshin, head of the Cultural Creative Center at the Gansu Provincial Museum, emphasized how these themed cafes and galleries. Fulfill the desires of today's youth for vibrant cultural spaces and diverse lifestyles. This trend isn't unique to Gansu. Museum themed cafes and shops have sprouted across China. The Shanghai History Museum. Houses a coffee shop adorned with historical decor, while the Shenyang Palace Museum boasts a cafe that celebrates Qing Dynasty culture. The flourishing of these cultural spaces mirrors the dynamism of China's cultural and creative. Industry. According to Zhiyan Consulting, the market for cultural and creative products in China surged to 16 billion last year, marking a 13 percent annual increase. At the Gansu Provincial Museum. The Cultural Creative Center has innovatively developed some 1,000 products inspired by museum artifacts. One plush toy modeled after the bronze galloping horse proved to be a runaway success since its launch. In 2022, pocketing 7 million yuan, about 1 million U.S. dollars, by the end of 2023, Tsui highlighted how these products have not only drawn a younger audience to the museum, but also inspired the creation of a dynamic. Cultural space that resonates with contemporary consumption preferences. Since its soft launch in early June, the Art and Life Gallery has welcomed at least five thousand visitors 
every day with cultural creative products flying off the shelves as soon as they're stocked. For visitors like Li Xingyue, a recent high school graduate, the experience at the Gansu Provincial Museum's Art and Life Gallery was nothing short of exhilarating. Lee noted that the gallery was surprising and the plush toys are reminiscent of China's own version of Jelly Cat, echoing the sentiment of many young patrons drawn to the fusion of cultural heritage and modern creativity. Shi Tzu, deputy curator of the museum, underscored the growing public thirst for spiritual and cultural enrichment, which is propelling museums to innovate continually. Shi observed that museums have evolved to become more significant as they resonate deeply with China's younger generation, encapsulating the evolving role of these institutions in today's cultural landscape. You're listening to Special English. Xiao Shu, or the minor heat, falls on July 6th this year. It is the 11th solar term on the traditional Chinese calendar. During minor heat, the temperature continues to rise, heralding the onset of the hottest days of the year. Besides the rising temperature, rain along with thunder and hail also comes in spades. As we endure the sweltering heat, seeking relief becomes a top priority, even if it's temporary. Ancient Chinese people had some great ideas that may help us stay cool in the modern time. One way for them was eating cold food, simple and effective. During the Tang Dynasty, a frozen dairy dessert called Sushan was very popular. Su referred to a dairy product with texture resembling cream or butter, while shan means mountain. The heated dairy fluid was carefully poured onto crushed ice to make a dessert that looks like a mountain. Picture this. It's a hot summer day and you lie on a bamboo mat. Beside you, a plate of icy sushan awaits, adorned with fresh fruit and flower petals. As you savor the delightful icy dessert, the coolness of the bamboo mat draws away extra heat. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? But wait, it gets even better. On top of all the above, an automatic raining pavilion can take the summer cooling experience to a new level. These pavilions were often built near water sources and utilized the real technology to draw water to the roof. The water would then cascade down from the eaves in all directions, carrying away the oppressive summer heat. Clever, isn't it? 
Besides the external cooling methods, ancient Chinese people also believed that attaining a calm and tranquil state of mind was pivotal in combating oppressive heat. As the famous poet Bai Ju Yi from the Tang Dynasty once wrote, the dispersal of heat relies on a peaceful mind. By nurturing inner calmness and clarity, people can discover their personal oasis of coldness amidst the summer heat. Instead of merely enduring the heat, consider embracing the joys of summer and harmonizing with nature. Finding your rhythm with the season can lead to a more enjoyable and refreshing summer experience. This is Special English. That's the end of this edition of Special English. To recap, I'm going to read one of the news items again at normal speed. Please listen carefully. Imagine yourself nestled deep within a well lit cave, sinking into a plush sofa, leisurely leafing through a magazine. Beside you, a steaming cup of freshly brewed coffee and a slice of cake shaped like a millennia old painted pottery jar await. This serene setting isn't just a figment of imagination, but a reality at the Art and Life Gallery affiliated to the Gansu Provincial Museum in northwest China, captivating the hearts of young visitors since its official opening in mid June. Tsui Yoshin, head of the Cultural Creative Center at the Gansu Provincial Museum, emphasized how these themed cafes and galleries fulfill the desires of today's youth for vibrant cultural spaces and diverse lifestyles. This trend isn't unique to Gansu. Museum themed cafes and shops have sprouted across China. The Shanghai History Museum houses a coffee shop adorned with historical decor, while the Shenyang Palace Museum boasts a cafe that celebrates Qing Dynasty culture. The flourishing of these cultural spaces mirrors the dynamism of China's cultural and creative industry. According to Zhiyan Consulting, the market for cultural and creative products in China surged to 16 billion last year, marking a 13% annual increase. At the Gansu Provincial Museum, the Cultural Creative Center has innovatively developed some 1,000 products inspired by museum artifacts. One plush toy modeled after the bronze galloping horse proved to be a runaway success since its launch in 2022, pocketing 7 million yuan about 1 million U.S. dollars by the end of 2023. Tsui highlighted how these products have not only drawn a younger audience to the museum, but also inspired the creation of a dynamic cultural space that resonates with contemporary consumption preferences. Since its soft launch in early June, the Art and Life Gallery has welcomed at least 5,000 visitors every day, with cultural creative products flying off the shelves as soon as they're stocked. For visitors like Li Xingyue, a recent high school graduate, the experience at the Gansu Provincial Museum's Art and Life Gallery was nothing short of exhilarating. Li noted that the gallery was surprising and the plush toys are reminiscent of China's own version of Jelly Cat, echoing the sentiment of many young patrons drawn to the fusion of cultural heritage and modern creativity. Shi Tzu, deputy curator of the museum, underscored the growing public thirst for spiritual and cultural enrichment, which is propelling museums to innovate continually. Schur observed that museums have evolved to become more significant as they resonate deeply with China's younger generation, encapsulating the evolving role of these institutions in today's cultural landscape. This is the end of today's program. I hope you'll join us every day to learn English at a slower pace. 